If sodium were to lose its single 3s electron, it would then have all completely filled sets of orbitals like the noble gas neon. This helps explain why a sodium atom readily loses one electron to form a positive sodium ion, Na+. Again, we can see how electron configuration can be used to explain properties. Now we'll skip ahead a few to sulfur, element number 16, with 16 electrons. We fill the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p. This accounts for 10 electrons, so we still have 6 left. Number 11 and 12 go into the 3s orbital. This leaves 4 more to add. These 4 enter the 3p orbitals as shown. So the configuration of sulfur is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Recall that oxygen's configuration was 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Oxygen and sulfur are in the same vertical column or group on the periodic table. It is significant that their configurations both end in s2, p4. Going back to sulfur, note that if a sulfur atom was to gain two electrons, it would have a completely filled set of 3p orbitals, which would make it stable. An S atom actually does gain two electrons to form a stable sulfide ion, which is S2-. The next element we'll do is argon. It has 18 electrons. So we start with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2. This accounts for a total of 12 electrons, so we have six more to add. I think you can see that these six electrons will go into the three 3p orbitals as shown here. So the configuration of argon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Again, we've achieved noble gas stability, and we can add the symbol for argon here. And notice that argon is on the end of the third period of the periodic table right below neon, that previous atom with noble gas stability. The next element we'll do is calcium, element number 20. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. This accounts for 18 electrons, so there are two more to add. These go into the next lowest orbital, the 4s. So the configuration of calcium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. You can see that if a calcium atom loses its two 4s electrons, it would have the stable electron configuration of argon. A calcium atom does readily lose two electrons to form the stable Ca2 plus ion. Calcium 2 plus ions are very abundant in nature and also perform very important functions in the human body. Right after calcium, element number 21 is scandium with 21 electrons. Here we go, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. This accounts for a total of 20 electrons, so we still have one more to add. So which orbital do you think that goes into? Well, the 3d orbitals are a little lower in energy than the 4p, so the 21st electron enters the 3d, and the configuration ends in 3d1. Notice where scandium is on the periodic table. It's the first element in the center section of period 4. Note that there are five 3d orbitals in a set, so the 3d orbitals will hold a maximum of 10 electrons. Also note that this section of the fourth period in the center of the periodic table contains 10 elements. These elements gradually fill up to 3d orbitals, starting with scandium, whose configuration ends in 3d1, and ending in zinc, whose configuration ends in 3d10. You can always check a configuration by adding up all the superscripts. Add all these up, and you can see that adding them all gives you a total of 30, which is the number of electrons in a neutral zinc atom, or the atomic number of zinc, which is 30. Now we'll do the configuration for element number 23, vanadium, V, with 23 electrons. It's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2. This accounts for 20 electrons, so we still have three more to add. You can see these three go into the first three empty 3d orbitals, occupying one at a time. So the configuration ends in 3d3. Now we'll do the next element, chromium, number 24, with 24 electrons. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. 
This accounts for 20 electrons. The four remaining electrons go into the first four 3d orbitals. And the expected configuration of chromium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d4. However, something different happens with chromium. One of the 4s electrons is removed and promoted from the 4s up to the fifth 3d orbital and enters the orbital here. So instead of 4s2, it's now 4s1. And instead of 3d4, it's 3d5. It turns out the energy used to promote this electron is worth it. Having a half-filled set of 3d orbitals gives the atom a great amount of stability. So you need to remember that the actual configuration of chromium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d5. Another element whose configuration is different than that predicted by the rules is copper, element number 29. You can see by entering 29 electrons, the expected configuration for copper ends in 3d9. But again, one of the 4s electrons is promoted from the 4s orbital to the fifth 3d orbital, which had a single electron. And we put the electron in here. So instead of 4s2, it's 4s1. And instead of 3d9, it's 3d10. Again, the energy used to promote the electron is justified, as having a completely full set of 3d orbitals also gives the atom a great amount of stability. So the actual configuration of copper is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, and 3d10. Chromium and copper are probably the only exceptions to predicted configurations you'll need to know in Chem 11. There's actually quite a few more, but you'll learn about those in later chemistry courses. Chromium promotes an electron from the 4s to the 3d to give a half-filled set of d orbitals. And copper promotes an electron from the 4s to the 3d to give a completely filled set of d orbitals.